In this lesson, we're going to walk through Arista's use of VRRP, or Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. Note that this is different than Arista's Virtual ARP, or VARP, feature. The Virtual ARP feature is covered in a different lesson. VRRP is an industry standard and dates back quite a ways. Let's take a quick look at VRRP running in one of our labs. In another lesson, we'll get into building the configuration. For now, let's look at VRP running between two switches. In this lab, I have VRP running between leaf one and leaf two, where those leafs are providing first hop redundancy for the default gateway of any device connected to these leafs. On leaf one, we can see the VRRP status with the command show VRRP brief, enter. In this output on leaf one, we can see we have VRRP running on the SVI for VLAN 7. And we can see that the state on this leaf is running as a role of backup. Moving over to leaf 2, we can issue the same command, show VRRP brief, and see we're also running VRRP on VLAN 7, and leaf 2 is the master. IETF RFC 2338 covered VRRP back in 1998. Since then, there have been several updating RFCs that obsolete 2338, including RFC 3768, published in 2004, and RFC 5798, that was published in 2010. RFC 5798 covers VRRP version 3. Here, in our output, we can see that we're using VRRP version 2. Per the RFC, VRRP specifies an election protocol that dynamically assigns responsibility for any virtual router to one of the VRRP routers on the LAN. The VRRP router controlling the IPv4 or IPv6 address or addresses associated with the virtual router is called a master, and it forwards packets sent to those IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. Further, RFC 5798 states that the election process provides dynamic failover in the forwarding responsibility should the master become unavailable. Chapter 20 of the current Arista Configuration Guide provides detailed information about VRRP and its configuration. A LAN segment may have several physical routers or switches that can forward traffic for hosts on that LAN. Ideally, we want redundancy should one fail. VRRP is one example of a protocol that can provide and maintain this redundancy. A virtual router is known by a virtual router identifier, or VRID, and the virtual IP address that it is providing services for. VRRP takes advantage of priority settings to assign roles for the virtual routers. These are referred to as master and backup. The master router in the virtual router group periodically sends advertisement messages. Using our lab, let's take a look at the output of the information about the virtual router identifier. Here on leaf two, we can see our VRID is seven and the state is master. Whereas on leaf one, as we saw previously, show VRP brief, this leaf also has the virtual ID of seven and is in the state of backup. The routers defined with the VRP backup role remain inactive, waiting to jump in should the VRP master fail. Arista supports the use of VRP for both IPv4 and IPv6. VRP is not enabled by default. We need to configure and then enable the switch's VRP settings. And it is Arista's recommendation that we do it specifically in that order configure, and then enable for the least amount of traffic disruption. There are some VRRP settings that, once VRRP is enabled, take effect by default. Some examples include the VRRP version, which defaults to version 2. You can manually set it to run version 3. The default VRRP priority is set at 100. The preemption option is enabled by default, and the VRRP advertisement interval is set to a default of one second. Using our lab, let's look at the output relative to the VRP version and VRP default priority. 
Here on leaf one, we'll issue the command show VRRP all, enter. And in this output, we can see our VRRP version is two. We're using the default. Our default priority can be found here and it is 100. And the VRRP advertisement interval is one second, which is also the default. There are other optional configurations you can add if they are applicable to your environment. One example is authentication. This is not enabled by default, nor is it a requirement, but you can add authentication if needed. Now that there are other devices on the network capable of features such as routing and VRRP, we are starting to see folks take advantage of the authentication feature. You can also add a description to your VRRP configuration. And another optional element is the use of a secondary IP address. The roles of the master and the backup router. The devices running VRRP within a common group will elect the master by comparing the priority settings. Arista defaults each device to a priority setting of 100. The priority values range from 1 to 254, with 254 viewed as the highest possible priority. Arista's implementation of VRRP also supports a feature that allows for dynamic changes to the priority assignment. The VRRP track option is used to track an object created by the track command. If the element being tracked goes down, then the VRRP priority assigned to that device and for that group can be dynamically adjusted to reflect that operational change. The track command is configured in global configuration mode. It creates an object that other features can reference, such as is the case with VRRP. For example, we can create a track object for watching the status of an interface. One example would be to go into config mode, so type config, enter, and then create the track element. The command is track, and in this case, we need to give it a name. I'm gonna call it eth1, and then interface, and here we're gonna identify the actual interface. So I wanna put in ethernet one, and then what do we wanna track? Our option here is the line protocol. So the command is line dash protocol and enter. We can then configure VRP to consume the state information of this tracked object and adjust our VRP priority as needed should this tracked object go down. VRP is an industry standard and one that Arista supports. We covered detailed VRP configuration examples in another lesson.